thank, thank you, Thomas. Well, uh, I'll be presenting on uh, non-man and molars. Here, non-man and molars means only freshwater and terrestrial, excluding marine species. I don't know anything about marine species. If you ask me what is what are the different species of marine mollusks, I will say I don't know. As clear as that. Um, uh, and I very straightforward. And thank God Guru is presenting up um, uh, everybody else because this all what I have seen are less charismatic species compared to amphibians. And this is least charismatic compared to all the Well, uh, just a one slide introduction about mollusk uh, because many of you have not been knowing what importance of mollusk. And interesting, this is the second largest phylum after the arthropod, nearly 1.2 lakh described species, and they say another 50 60,000 uh, or more get to be described. Uh, many of them are in the tropical regions. And like amphibians in the Western Ghats, land and freshwater model show very high specialized distribution. Nearly 80 85 percent of them are metal. Many of them are point and the not from beyond that. Few square kilometers in the, in the western guards. And the uh, freshwater models are found in only one waterfall. Only one for, for waterfall, the total area would cannot be more than uh, 100 square meters. That's the level of endorphism. And models are very, very important in research and they are very important in uh, as a food for animals and humans. In Europe, they have shown that uh, uh, models are very important for shell formation in uh, tick you know, birds, and some of them are uh, present in, in invasive. Uh, coming to the diversity, you might ask how many species are there in India and how many in Western Ghats? There are 1,130 terrestrials in India and around 200 freshwater models. Coming to the Western Ghats, uh, around um, 280 terrestrial snakes and around 60 uh, freshwater models, and uh, half a dozen more to be established. Uh, in the next six months. Uh, all terrestrial and gastropods, uh, all terrestrial snails are gastropods. Gastropods means gastros means stomach, poda means leg. They've got legs on their stomach. That's why they're called gastropods. But on the other hand, fresh, uh, freshwater environment has got uh, gastropods as well as a bivalve, they clan, this uh, mollusk with two shells. These two are uh, representing freshwater and terrestrial is only the one group. These this clucks are all gastropod which does not have any shell. Sometimes very small in internal shell, but generally slugs lack uh, the shell, external shell and they are very, very slimy. Semi slugs are neither slings nor uh, slugs, they are in between. They have a very thin uh, shells, but uh, the animals cannot retract inside the shell. On the other hand, the snails have got very prominent thick shells that animals can retract and hibernate in uh, or whatever, whatever nomenclature you want to use uh, during uh, unfavorable condition. Uh, I will give five examples of terrestrial snail and four of freshwater mollusks. And I will tell you how to identify. Uh, um, this is the, one of the very common uh, a snake which is uh, found toward, almost toward in India and it's very common in Bangalore. I think almost uh, all have seen this in IAC campus, GKBK, Banagata Park uh, and uh, uh, other you know, slightly vegetated areas, uh, sometimes in the uh, urban areas as well. And key character is um, a huge shell, they can go up to 15 centimeters in length, very uh, with conical. And uh, it has got uh, brown and uh, yellow bands on, on the shell. They are literally huge. They are as big as this. Mm. They are 12 to 15 to centimeter. Their habitat is uh, urban or rural area. They can feed on 500 different types of uh, uh, the native and introduced to plants. By the way, this is the invasive species. The native of East Africa, but introduced in India in 1807, uh, sorry, 1847, since then it has become invasive. And this species has been listed as one of the hundred of the invasive species in the world. And we have um, uh, uh, listed this species under another group called spice, spotting alien invasive species. If you find this uh, species 
to take photograph and please upload not only in molar section but also in uh, spice uh, section. The second uh, species is Indala Angula. I think many of you have seen yeah, in IPP portal or in Facebook. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful shell, a beautiful snail, endemic to the Western Guards, uh, found between 18 to 13 degree latitude, and they are big snails. And you cannot miss this. If you go to the forest, European forest, and Kerala, and uh, tour, and some part of the Tamil Nadu, you cannot miss this snail. If it is there, you just cannot miss it. The main identifying character is the black, thin, rounded shell and red body, sorry, orange body. And there are two, more, two other color morphs. This is a red morph, this is orange morph, and this is a yellow morph. So these are the three different morphs under the Indrala angular, one of the uh, highly endemic, and this species is uh, not for anywhere else, it's called genus itself is endemic to the evergreen for forest of the western guns. Third species is Aerophanta bistalis. This is one of the commonest terrestrial snake found in Bangalore. Go to GKBK or IAC campus, you can find this, uh, find this snake. The main identification character is, let's say, I think there are two lines here and a light here. That's why it is called as bistalis. There are two, uh, two uh, spiral uh, lines. You can, in the dry shell, you can make out the lines very faintly. In the fresh, uh, the living animal, it's very prominent. In the shell, uh, dead shell, dead animal, the, the line is not very prominent, but it, uh, you, you can tear it. And it's a medium size, uh, size thing, this big shell is this big. And it's found in uh, rural and urban area, it's found in the peninsula of India and also found in Sri Lanka. This is a slug, it does not have any shell, uh, very slimy and one of the very common uh, slug of peninsular uh, <coughs> in India and it can be very easily identified. It's large and it can go as big as in and it has got two lines here uh, and in the mid, mid the region is slightly raised and a pattern uh, on the body. This, uh, this part and this part, and there is slight variation also in the indicator color. Interestingly, this species is invasive in Sri Lanka, but in uh, in uh, India, it's just a pest, pest on horticulture and agriculture. Though, but they are not very, very serious pests like African uh, African uh, things. <coughs> This is another spell very common in Bangalore. You might have seen in uh, most of the parks here. And unlike the previous spell, this is almost flat. It's also ventrally for flattened uh, uh, spell. And it has got a line right uh, in, the, in, uh, in the center, which runs from uh, anterior portion to the posterior portion. And un underside, it has got a very prominent uh, ridge. If you look at the underside of the animal, got very prominent uh, type uh, like, like this and it's not an in Indian species it's introduced. It's, it, it can grow as big as uh, maximum up to 5 cm, not, not more, more than that. It is again this is an uh, introduced species but that, this is not an invasive, it's just a pest. Yeah, these uh, five uh, terrestrial snail, which is very commonly uh, seen, there are four examples of uh, freshwater mollusks which is commonly seen in, in uh, lakes in and around Bangalore. You might, everybody must have uh, uh, read about Pilagogos in the school or college. But whatever we see in peninsula India, it's not Pilagogos, it's Pilavirens. There's a subtle difference between Globosa and Virens. Uh, all those Pila which is found above uh, in North Pole, uh, they are all Pylagrobosa and all those uh, pylag which is found in southern India or peninsula India, pylagrobosa. The main character is sort of a globose shell, just like a pylagrobosa, but very prominent aperture with a thick operculum. Operculum is the lid which closes the shell. 
that's very prominent and oval shape and the suture, suture is the, uh, the rich between the uh, ovals, these are all called ovals, the suture is very pro prominent. And in some of these spe uh, specimens, you can see uh, three or four uh, bands which runs in the body wall, like uh, from the brown bands. Here you can see four, one, four. This is the characteristic of the pila, uh, It's a widely distributed in the peninsula of India, found in both lentic system as well as lotic system. Lentic uh, is stagnant water body, lotic is flowing over, uh, flowing over water body. And it's uh, uh, very good food for the large birds like uh, herons and uh, open bridge stone. Open bridge stone can crush this shell and eat the animal. And it can grow up to this big. Sometimes uh, humans consume uh, this uh, snake. They are very, very rich in protein. Yeah, the second example is Indoplanopolis exudus. This is particularly interesting because from the medical point of view. Uh, before going to the, that, uh, coming to the taxonomic character, it is dorsal, dorsal ventral is flattened. Unlike the previous one, it does not have an apex. You can see, it does not have an apex, and the apex is compressed. It's a flat. The shell is flat with, uh, with a prominent opening. It's slightly bent, ear shaped opening. Dorsal ventral tract without any uh, apex tree, shell tip. And this is this species can uh, withdraw any level of organic pollution. If you go to any Bangalore lake here, Bachin Adli, Putan Adli, Putan Adli, especially in the uh, side, you can see plenty. They are found attached to the vegetation uh, and they are carrier for rat lung from cystomiasis. So if you handle this thing, Please be careful, use gloves and handle this thing or uh, wash your hands with the sanitizer or so because the, uh, these are the intermediate host for rat lung worm. This is not a major disease but still uh, it's better not to take the risk and it's a very small uh, snake, it's as big as my name, it, it won't go beyond, uh, beyond that and it can, it's invariably for founding only in like lentic water so that stagnant water body with it can withstand uh, the uh, uh, high level of organic uh, uh, pollution. Thing is, the uh, shell is very thin and you cannot misidentify uh, this snake. <coughs> Third one is Bellamian Bengalensis. This is one of the very common snake on throughout India and has been harvested in it very large quantity, especially in uh, West Bengal, Orissa and the Dosa region, uh, in quintals. Sometimes, uh, Ganesan has uh, photographed this uh, last year, I think, in Siliguri, the several sack full of uh, species of things harvested from the mobile. And again, this is also carrier for uh, rat lung form or suggestive disease. The identification character is the band, the longitudinal band, uh, in all the world's conical shell and almost roundish uh, the aperture, aperture is the opening and you can see the uh, apex which is very prominent and conical, conical in shape and the brown band. It's again, it's very common thing, it's found in the band which is the It's also small to medium sized, uh, uh, smallest, it can go maximum up to this big, thumb uh, size. Uh, Animal The last species is Limnia luteola. Uh, the size is very strongly uh, uh, here. This is a very small snake, maybe as big as this one. Uh, the shell is very thin, translucent, yellowish in color, and uh, it has got. It has got very narrow apex, very narrow, broad uh, uh, and uh, what's that uh, body wall. The body wall is the largest wall, which is very big compared to the other walls, and also the aperture is oval and long. And shell is very thin and almost uh, 
a yellowish in color and this also is found in polluted water bodies you can see uh, most of the water bodies around uh, bangalore uh, and it's also carrier for rat for and bomb so be careful when you handle this nail uh, this nail also uh, thank you and these are the other species of the snail which is found in the western guards and these are the architecture what you can see uh, the opening of uh, mm -hmm. the sh shell with different type of teeth and uh, sculpture on the shell surface all these are tax taxonomic character and one more thing mm, many of uh, snails terrestrial or freshwater can be identified up to generic level using only shell character Main, uh, few species can be identified up to species level from the shell character but if you want to go to uh, species level you might have to dissect and look at genitalia as well as the uh, radula radula is the teeth of the mollusk is called radula but almost all um, uh, mollusks can be identified up to generic level using uh, shell character that's one of the advantage and if you are more interested in studying about mollusks you can refer to this book which is available freely uh, online and there are a few copies available with me also uh, this, we have photographed all four angles of the shell and all western guard species can be identified using uh, this thing thank you